We'll go live and oh, here we go. We are now live. So I'm gonna here's what I'm gonna smoke today. I'm gonna smoke my um, Rocky Patel Year of the Dragon. That's what I'm gonna have today. That's a, by the way, that's an impressive looking cigar. I have to say. Can I have Can I have a quick sneak preview again at the at the band on your cigar? Yes, I will do it. I'll do this. I'll scare the fans. I'm gonna do a solo, and there you go. This is the Rocky that's Patel Year of the, the Dragon. Back. Isn't it? Very, very nice. That is the Rocky Patel Year of the Dragon. So Rocky, I think I've had this before. It's not bad. Um, you know, it's a New World cigar. It is what it is. That, the, that band deserves to be taken off neatly. Yes. Pressed flat and then uh, arranged on the back of your phone in a transparent case. Oh, so, yes. I should do that. Yeah, because that's a you know it's like a conversation piece. You know, when you're yeah. sitting around at a airport lounge, or you're sitting yeah. around, you know, with friends, and you turn right, your well, my thing. All right, I'm gonna let me let me cut the head. <laughs> and since our Samone is in here, I'll do everything wrong, um, and I can't get in trouble for that. Last week's show did very well; people loved it, so that was yep. good. Let me just peel this gently, like a virgin. Ooh, a virgin. Oh, by the way, by the way, yeah. I always do this when I'm here. I'm in uh, Belgravia, London right now. Again, I'm at Tom Tom. Yes, you are. Nice. Uh, I like showing off the lounge because I get that loungy vibe here. But mm -hmm. here we go. A bit library-esque. It's a little bit, uh, how do you call this in the USA? It's a bit of a speakeasy because a lot of people don't really know it's down here. Right. And, um, if you know, you know. Um, if you know, you know. And you can see there's great lounge down there. I see. It's got a fireplace. It's got a, you know, it's like your TV. Very nice. And it's, it's a very cozy little, we would call that old school a gentleman's club. Yeah. But not I mean, the gentleman's yeah. club with a strip club. Not a stripper gentleman's club, but like a, a gentleman's club. Well, I'm not doing that today. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but, uh, and, I'm, and I'm smoking here a cigar, yeah. which... <laughs> I'm ashamed to say I thought I was smoking for the first time. Turns out four years ago during yeah. COVID, I smoked a whole box of them. The only way I can ever really remember what I've smoked, if it if I've forgotten it, is go I go on my Instagram account and then go through it and say, Did I smoke it? Did I smoke it? And I found it. Right. So this this cigar, the H. Upman Magnum fifty. Wow, I love those. Plenty of. Um I, I don't remember it so much because well, it was during COVID and I was smoking mm. a lot of stuff. And if it really stands out, it stands out. But yes. on the advice of a few of my regular smoking cigar buddies, uh, who've all said to me, Reza, you're missing out if you don't smoke H. Upman's. You're missing yeah. out. You're missing out on some really class act smoking. I've been smoking them a little bit more recently, and I'm beginning to appreciate that there's a there's a it, it's smoother, sort of a, a milder cigar, but it has a certain complexity complexity to it, and I'm beginning to enjoy that. So um, thanks to all those people who recommended it to me. And I've been, I've been smoking the H. Upman um, cigars for a while. And I love their 50 and 54s. I usually get the 54 from a source that we won't name. But mm -hmm. uh, he speaks uh, Spanish. Um, and he's only 90 miles away from America. But close enough. And uh, I enjoy I enjoy my um, my H Upmans. Is when that I have how them. far away it is? Ninety miles. It's ninety. Not, miles. Cuba is ninety miles away by boat. If you walk it, it's a little further, but by boat, it's ninety miles away. Yeah. I remember watching a movie sort of like 10, 15 years ago. You know the Miami Vice movie? Yeah, That's sure. With Jamie Fox and um, oh, 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 the other. I know. Uh, it, 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 it was the worst movie ever, but yes, I, I remember. Love, I, I'll be honest with you, I loved it, and I I, I I loved it because it caught the atmosphere of Miami. But actually, one of the yeah. parts that I remember very well is uh, Crockett taking a fast boat for yeah. a drink in Cuba. So he just hammers it to Cuba, yep. goes for a drink, and comes back again. And I thought, oh, is it that far? Is it that close? It is uh, ninety miles, and with and back in the um. Back in the 80s, when Miami was snowing every day on the beach, um, that's what the uh, runners used to do with their cigarette boats, is they would, they get cigarette boats go 100 plus miles an hour, and they would go wherever, and they'd come back, and they would drop their stuff. And Cuba comes to mind more recently. I, I bought a book uh, um, last weekend 
Ernest, yeah. Ernest Hemingway's last book that he wrote that I never got around to reading called oh, wow. Islands, in, Islands in the Stream, which was about basically his last sort of 10 years living in Cuba and some of the surrounding islands. I'm really looking right. forward to reading that, but the, the, I've got that fl- that Cuban flavor going on in buckets and spades right now. Nice. Well, I'm looking forward to today's show. Not that you're going to be teaching people how to retro smoke, but I know our Samone, when he gets here, is going to pull out his little kit. And I'm talking about, you know, for cigars. Um, and he's going to teach people how to taste the flavor of a cigar with his kit. And I'm excited about that because I would love to know what this is this Rocky Patel Year of the Dragon cigar is supposed to taste like. I'm enjoying the cigar. It's a nice smoke. It's a beautiful aroma. Not really getting well, caramels and nuts and what I guess that I'm supposed to, but I'm enjoying well, the cigar. What are you getting? What are, in your opinion, what are you getting? Are you getting some woodiness out of it? Are you getting sort of cedary aspect? How Hold on one it... second. Let me tell you what I'm getting. You're getting Macallan. That's what you're getting. I'm getting uh, a 25 year old Macallan. Yeah, that's what I taste. That's what I taste. That's good. No, I don't really taste. I've never been one that can taste a cigar, even with wine, when people go, do you taste this? I'm like, no, it's wine. Even with scotch, when they go, do you taste the book? I'm like, no, it's scotch. It tastes like turpentine. That's what it tastes like. It is what it is. So I'm not, I've never had the palate for the taste. Um, and I'm okay with that. I just enjoy other aspects of it. On the other hand, I yeah. have a friend who, um, a fairly big cigar collector, Cuban cigar collector in himself, he does this. Yeah. He does this. And he can gauge mm. sort of the flavor profile of a cigar from the perfume the of the cigar. Ah. Yeah. A very okay. developed sense of taste. Um, so, and I'm quite astounded by that, by the way. Yeah. And, and he very accurately will tell me, this is going to be a sweetish cigar. It's going to be a woody cigar. Oh, wow. Cream. He's very... Okay. Ad- I just thought it was I just thought it was just sort of like fooling around kind of stuff, right? But actually right. he seems to be able to nail it pretty well. Um, wow. But he, knows All right. cigars. he knows more about cigars than I'll ever learn. Um and, but, uh, and that, but for you and I, and I and if I may, I think you and I we go we enjoy cigars because of I wanna and this does not is gonna come out totally wrong and send all your cards and letters to David because he has nothing to do with his life and it's good for him to read Um, because of our heritage um, because of our fathers or our grandfathers that got us into it. So for us, it's very much a old world, old school. It connects us and we enjoy it. Other people get into it because they want to be like our Samone. Like they want to be a connoisseur. They want to smell it and look at it and roll around naked with the leaves and can tell you all about it where you and I will be like, Oh, I enjoy this cigar. And I can still tell you about it, but I cannot tell you to the extent like Usman can tell us about a cigar. Yeah, but that's 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 the technical knowledge. I mean, one of the great right. reasons, or sorry, one of the great um, things about having someone like Usman on the show right. is all the smoking and and sort of the the chat to one side. There is a technicality, which I hope again today he's going to share with us the actual yes. technicality of trying to work out what a cigar tastes like. And right. I guess even if you aren't an expert, just that sort of that holding on one minute more to think about it in itself yeah. perhaps can increase your enjoyment because your brain is a little bit fighting to sit, right? What am I tasting? Rather than just blowing right. smoke into the air, right, right. what am I tasting here? And uh, like very, very unusually, I had a cigar maybe two months, three months ago that wasn't a Cuban cigar that when I lit it, for the first two or three puffs or draws, it almost tasted of apples. Nice. It was, well, you say nice, but it lasted two or three puffs and it was gone. And then there was nothing for the rest of the cigar. But oh. a memorable cigar, nevertheless, because it was an exceedingly different. It was just not a flavor profile I was expecting, nor have I ever right. got that from a cigar. Yeah. Uh, I won't mention which one, but memorable it's it's a right. memorable cigar it wasn't a particularly anything cigar but it was memorable and memorable the, cigar. That, in it, that in itself can be you know um and to be honest i didn't need to be particularly technical i think even a uh, even even someone with a cold 
or all that stuff's <laughs> gone would would have got some sort of, what it's a very unusual head of apples here right, um, right. um but uh i'm i'm actually just as interested in you as you in knowing what the technicality behind this is in terms yes. of what am i looking for and i and i guess if i can guess in advance before this mom comes on it's you need to have perhaps five or six flavors already in your head and identify well this like for example coffee chocolate right cedar wood um you know like all and, and a couple more i'm sure he's going to talk to you about them <coughs> excuse me and then a bit like thai food so thai food is a sort of like a combination of sweet sour right. salty bitter so those problems so if you start, if you have that language in your head, you can start a little bit veering in that direction, and then perhaps that might increase your enjoyment. I think that's what it's about. Yeah. I believe so that's just a I, guess on my part. I you see, and to me, when people would say, "Oh, I taste this, this, and that," I'm like, oh, "That's interesting," but it never became a thing for me. Oh, I need to taste it. It was more the enjoyment of and the aroma of. Because, you know, when my grandfather would smoke, I never really tasted his cigars. I was six, seven years old, right? I would, it's the aroma of a cigar. Yeah. Um, when I lived in New York, I remember in the summertime, in the springtime, we would walk out a friend who had a restaurant like on first and fifth. And we would have dinner at like 10 o'clock at night. And then a group of us would walk all the way back up to 40 something street where I lived. And we would just be smoking cigars and all these girls would be up the outside bars drinking and you'd walk by and go, oh, my God, you remind me of my father or my this one. or that. And it was just interesting that the cigars bring back this memory of a, of a different era. And there's just I'm something to, elegant totally about it. You. I'm totally with you. As you know, as you know, I think we're, very, we're sort of 95% the same when it comes to why we're smoking cigars. We're trying to capture, right. we're trying to capture an older world, yeah. um, um, a more familiar world. Yeah. And it is definitely aroma memory rather than taste memory, because as you say, we're too young to have tried those. I mean, I, I, I was like, I probably had my first cigar, not completely. I must have just puffed on a cigar at the age of about 12. And okay. then, and then a, a, another one three or four months later. And then the more I got into it, when I say got into it, it was, it was the enjoyment of taking stuff out of my father's humidor without right. him knowing. That was the enjoy. That was the enjoyment. Right, right. It's like I'm partaking in in, in a world of adults, and I'm just right. not quite there. So, so let's say if I did have my first puff at the age of twelve, that was forty years ago. Wow. And uh, it was never about taste. Even in that moment, it was never about taste. It's like a gambler. A gambler doesn't necessarily gamble to win millions a gambler gambles for the thrill of the ball going around the roulette table and when it's right. going to drop right you see it's a thrill it's the adrenaline it's the adre it's the adrenaline it's like being an adrenaline it's junkie adrenaline rush, right? right so and with a cigar for me as, as you know like i like it for the old world but i also like it because it really is like a too many mini it's a two hour mini holiday whether i'm smoking with you guys or whether I'm doing it on my own, it's a two hour mini holiday. I can read a book, I can do nothing, I can read the news, or I can listen to music, and I just don't care. Like the whole world just goes away. And and on the stuff that we do, I'm not curing cancer. I'm not, you know, helping the starving people. I'm not, that's, I, so I'm good. Like the two hours someone can't get a hold of me, it's the world's gonna survive. And, you know? And I think it's a very coherent, argument to say that if you make it a bigger occasion mm -hmm. I'm, I'm beginning to appreciate this a lot more i was i used to be quite dismissive of these things but if you dress up right, dress right. Up, and you put your cologne on i mean i the aroma thing again is with a color nice cologne yep. nice cigar uh something nice to drink that has a nice uh if, if you kind of uh, prepare for battle and you put the armor on and this right that can elevate your cigar smoking experience yes. um, a lot. Um, yes. However shallow it may sound, and it used to sound quite shallow to me, but you know what? If you're going to enjoy yourself, if you're going to go to a party, dress up, the getting ready, the going out in itself is part of the enjoyment of being at the party. Right. I agree. So, but, and that's um, the same with a cigar. And to your point, now, when I'm home working, when I get to work at the house, you know, 
my polo shirt and a shorts, I'm good. But when we do the show, and I'm and the reason I'm not dressed to the nines like usual in a tuxedo is it's we're doing the show later today. And that's and for the people that are watching it live, they usually know we do it about eight o'clock in the morning central time on Friday, and it's ten thirty in the morning central time. And that two hours, we've gone from about seventeen C to about thirty C. So I am with, there's no humidity, so it's good. But I've said, eh, there's no way I'm dressing in a tuxedo in that kind of way. A, I have um, a, a little observation recommendation for you. Sure. Usman will make, uh, the, you get a shirt. I'm so, I'm so absent-minded these days. There's a certain shirt you wear in Cuba and right, right. Uh, Guybera. I, I, ha- I, I have one of those from uh, yeah. Tommy Bahama with a parrot on it. Yeah, try that next time for, for oh. your outdoor smoking. Uh, if if for anything, if for I mean, uh, throughout summer I was doing all my sort of like Hawaiian style shirts. And mm-hmm. When I was in that, I told you I was in that Miami drug dealer mode. Uh, but yes. um, but <laughs> it it kind of changes your frame of mind a little bit more. It sort of puts you like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna smoke. And uh, you might want to try that next time. That, that might, that might. Be. I'd actually like to see your uh, the Tommy Bahama I, kit. I thought, I thought, I actually thought today, you know, I could do naked, but then I didn't want to scare anybody. Yeah, so I was be, like, yeah, be, yeah. No, but Tom, Tommy Bahama was quite popular, sort of like 15, 16 years ago. That's my recollection. I'm, da- I'm dating myself. I walked into a Tommy Bahama shop, and there was it had two fake cigars on the pocket, and in the back had this mega parrot with a cigar in its mouth. I was like, so I'm going to cool. get that. So it's somewhere in the closet. I will try to find it and wear that next yeah. time. Yeah, but you should come, if we're doing... We should come out with I should Stop it. Um, <laughs> but if I'm going to... But if I'm going to... If we're going to do the show next Friday at either normal time, I will be in a tuxedo because there's just That's something about having a stogie in a tuxedo. Perfection. Yeah. Very cool. The, the the dressing up for the fun is good fun. Yeah, in itself. I enjoy it. And well, I get I, I a little bit get away with it because this, you know, this is quite a, as you would say, a swanky mm. club or a swanky. And I get away with because you know, um, this me. Um, right. I, I I have to bring the tone of everything down slightly. That's just wow. the way. We were aware. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, there, there is a, a value to it. Yeah, I, I enjoy it. it. When, where is our friend? Do you know where our friend is? I don't know. He's, you know, this is the problem when you get a Salmoné. He's very famous, um, you know. And then again, he's he's in Pakistan, where we thought he's you were going to be today. He's stuck in the whole traffic right now. Yeah, is he driving to you? Because if he's driving to you, eh, it's a long drive. I think he's uh, no. I think he's he's doing his commute from work to home. Um, oh. As we're talking right now, he may be running to get changed and then find his. He's created a beautiful little section in his house just for the yes. YouTube videos. Um, and the headphones will go on. Uh, a bit like a football sports commentator. He'll be yes. on. The pro, or the, pro in, or, the pro in the trio. Or, or in an F1. Actually, this morning when I was working, because I didn't have to talk to anybody, I was watching uh, the Singapore F1, the trials. Because um, I know you said you don't like F1 because of Lewis Hamilton. The good thing is Lewis Hamilton now sucks. And McLaren is kicking ass over Red Bull and Ferrari's kicking ass. So the good thing is, is if you want to watch F1 this weekend, you can watch Ferrari and McLaren probably win the Singapore Grand Prix. My goodness. I've, I gone, off it. I've gone off it generally. I really? I, I, I think, I've, I, you know what? It, to me, it will never be ex- as exciting as it was in the 80s, especially in the 90s when you had people right. like Ayrton Senna, Nigel Mansell in sort of these VA-powered, mega monster cars yep. and Alain Prost, Damon Hill. Yeah. Uh, that was, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm a nostalgic person. You're not going to yeah. capture that time again. You're just going to. Well, like you had Sir Jackie Stewart when he would drive. Yeah. That was, uh, oh, that's a beauty. So, but so I still, I enjoy it. It's just something, it's something, it's not as romantic if it, as it was in the 70s, 80s or 90s. They made it very much like NFL or uh, football on your side of the pond. They've made it very much commercialized, but still it's just fun to watch and enjoy um, because you realize there is a lot of talent there. Like NASCAR, not so much. You're just making a left turn all the time, um, going around an oval. With F1, it's a little different. You have to actually drive. 
You see, with so. me, when I used to watch F1, it was literally like a sport. It was classed mm-hmm. as a sport. Now, I find F1, people who, what, generally speaking, obviously present right. companies included, it's just a lifestyle. It's a, oh, yeah. it's a, you know, it's a sort of like going, it, it doesn't, it doesn't have that competitive quality to me anymore. It was a much more man a, and machine kind yeah. of thing. And now I don't now think it's, it is. It's, tech, it's man and technology. It's like, can you shave an inch off of your car to get this? Can you get that? And when, and when I do go to the ones, I mean, and we do do the VIP thing. Mm-hmm. It's, I always joke. I'm, I like, I love, I love seeing the, the guys there. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And I'll be like, oh, it's a pleasure meeting your wife. And then when the girl leaves, I go, that's not my wife. I'm like, okay, good enough. And uh, I leave it at that. It's like a rich man. It's like a rich man's playboy. I'm going to take my sugar baby, my mistress or whatever with me. And my wife is home with the kids. And I'm like, "Ah, it is what it is. It is what it is. So, um, well, I don't know if they're allowed cigar smoking at F1 events. They have a I, when when you're in the pit area. Apparently, they frown upon it. Something about explosions, pussies. Um, and I'm like, what do you mean explosions? That's not my problem. So you know, but yeah, they won't let you smoke in the booth either. I am assuming, um, you probably can, but I definitely frowned upon. Like if there was a group of us and we had our own VIP suite and we we're all cigar smokers, I'm assuming we could probably pay someone enough money that we could have cigars. So far enough from gas fumes, though, because you know, I, I wouldn't want to be on the six o'clock news. I'm going to say something about this cigar, by the way, whilst we're chatting. Please. Away. Yeah. Nutty and light. Mm. Really quite likable cigar. I, I don't know what I've been thinking. I love the H up in 50 and 54s. They're like one of my favorite. Um, it's a very easy smoke. Very, yeah. very easy smoke. Um, uh, I had one earlier here at Tom Tom, maybe a couple of hours ago. I got here a couple of hours ago. I had a meeting. Okay before that and is I that the excuse you used okay uh I, uh that's the excuse that we're picking with okay you're going uh, with it and half corona very easy oh, very nice. easy 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 smoke all hey, right this, this cigar is very actually you know i was at an event a couple of days ago i was posting right. one at langan's um and we had a k or say 52 which i suspect is a similar kind of size cigar I could have done with this actually. Yeah. Even that was a nice cigar. This would be a really, really nice yeah. starter it's... cigar. A starter cigar for those that want to take their cigaring seriously, I guess. I like that. And if you're into New World, I will say the Rocky Patel, Year of the Dragon cigar. Same thing. Year of the Dragon. So did yeah. you decide? Did you have you had a moment to think about what kind of notes you're getting out of it? Any note? You're getting smoke. Um, I'm getting I'm getting ACDC back in black. I thought and you were, I, I, I thought you were <laughs> gonna say I'm getting notes of dragon. I'm getting yes, I'm getting notes of dragon poo. It's very good. Uh yeah, and uh, Game of Thrones and uh, it's uh, in the Draconian house. No, I don't and and Rocky watches the show. So Rocky, send me a box and then uh, come to Austin, we'll smoke them and you'll tell me what I'm missing. So there you go. So what can I tell you? Yeah, come on the show, so. say hi, say hello. Uh, yeah. Drop in, drop out. Um, we're 24 oh, minutes. And, and by the way, and we haven't even started the show. We're just doing live. Um, by the way, we finally do have a Patreon page, which soon we will publicize and people can become executive producers. And the credits we'll put on the end of the show with the people that sponsor the show. Yeah, I mean, uh, what is it? 100,000 subscribers? 100. 103. 100, 100, as of this morning, 103,033. 333333. Three, 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 three. Well, that, that's uh, an interesting number. And I guess that's a, uh, a number that people enjoy. I, I'm sure your sponsors will enjoy that. I'm sure those people looking for exposure through your channel are going to enjoy that. Oh, I'm looking for exposure all the time. But uh, apparently it's frowned upon and I have restraining orders, so. Correctly. Well, we I, we haven't even started the show, so I guess we should give Usman a few more minutes, and then if not, we'll start and end the show very quickly. So you know, because our our boy our boy I is this was, I thought this was the show actually. Well, um, here if you want um, technically if you want to start the show, let let me do this then. If, if we're starting the show, because we haven't okay. technically done we haven't technically done this. This is Two O F Entertainment. 
the Habanos Cigar Dinner and Drink Show, exclusively on 2OF Entertainment, with over 100,000 YouTube subscribers and rapidly growing to be the most watched and podcast cigar show broadcast globally. The Habanos Cigar Dinner and Drink Show, exclusively on 2OF Entertainment. Now we've started the show. Now, <laughs> I've noticed in the credits, Rob, cool guy. Yeah, Rob Vegas, sure. I've, been, I've changed a few conversations with him on your, uh, on yeah, your on our chat. Let me just say, Rob Vega sounds like a Quentin Tarantino villain. Doesn't he? He does, doesn't he? It's very Rob cool. And he, and he did it on his last show. He told the story of how he got his name, Rob Vega. Uh, and, and summarize? Well, so his real name is Roll Woods, right? That's yes. his real name. I so think Rob is Roll, by the way. I, I don't right, think right. it's when he says roll, though, I always want to goose step and do this, but a uh, different story. <laughs> um, but and 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 when we do um, when he's on Morton's show, um, ad hoc, because roll is Norwegian, you roll everything. So it's and like it's like oh my god, it's too much work. Um, so what happened is is he was getting into radio, and he was in Hollywood. And he had to do voiceovers and they go, we need a name. And Roll Woods just isn't going to flow off of people's tongue. So Rob was a family member's name. And Vega was like from the Irish side, like four generations ago. And someone said like, they started with Rob Vegas. And that didn't go. And then it was Rob something else. And, and somebody said, how about this is Rob Vega? And it stuck. And that was it. So the world voice guy who does our voiceovers and also has his own show on the channel. Got it because people were just rifting and came up with a name. Very interesting. By the way, yeah, yeah. If the, we had a show just now before mm -hmm. the opening credits. But for those right. that weren't watching this, I'm smoking the H. Upman Magnum 50, as recommended to me by several people. And uh, as I was saying to you, because the Alzheimer's is kicking in, I don't mean that, but it yeah. feels it. I forgot that maybe three or four years ago, well, it was around the COVID time, I smoked right. a whole bottle of these. And I probably enjoyed them, but I spent most of that uh, smoking time. I, 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 you can actually see it on my Instagram. I was uh, driving around central London late at night um, on, on, on most evenings, great weather, top down, smoking right. these, enjoying myself. So in, in that enjoyment, I forgot what I was smoking and that I was enjoying it. But I'm revisiting the cigar on the recommendation yeah. of a few friends, and it's going really nice, um, yeah. nutty, mm -hmm. and light. And I am smoking for the people that actually care or don't care, a New World cigar. It's Rocky Patel's Year of the Dragon, and I will say I'm getting a little nutty flavor from it. Now, so now I'm getting a little nutty. Flavor? I'm would getting a nutty flavor up, after 30 minutes. you hold up the extra band that you took off the cigar? Oh, yeah. The band that... This is the this is the real. That's, let me a, just, that's, let me, that's, a, that's a real I will, deal. I will do a close up of this band. There you go. This that's is the Rocky band. Patel. Yeah, that's the Rocky Patel, Year of the Dragon cigar band. Uh, and to and to Riz's suggestion, I am going to flatten it out, and I'm going to tattoo it on my tukas. Um So people will always or, or, or stick it on the back of your phone underneath a transparent case. Either, either, either way. If people are going to see it either way. Okay. I'm, I'm, we're, I'm not shy. So, uh, yeah, we'll go. And I think our, our Salmon A uh, apparently uh, is not going to Salmon A today. So we may have a short show. I have a prediction. You, I, I would love it. I think he's probably going to join us mm. in a moment. Okay. And then he's going to send it out to all your mutual friends. And then our fans will just explode like they did last time. I have time. an idea. And here I'm he is. I have an idea. Let's play a joke. Yeah. Let's, see, let's say we're finished the show when he comes. Oh, Hello, Hello, Jen. Jen. thanks so for showing up. Well, thank you. Thanks for everybody for tuning in. It was a great and, show. Uh, uh, we're uh, sorry uh, the Salmon name missed it. It's glad you could you show know up the, the last minute. You, you, you know, the fun part. Tell us, hey, let's just say. Let's just say that we're finishing up and he joins in. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was AI Risa. That was AI Risa. That was AI Risa. Yeah, yeah, right. So Mr. No, Salmon. Then, okay, Doc. In, in my defense. Start... No, Doc, in, in my Doc. defense. No, no, in yeah. my defense. Yes. The gentleman something. sitting on your on, on, on your left side of the screen and my right side of the screen. This one, this one, my mm -hmm, the mm -hmm, up one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
is the actual reason for this entire mess up because if you remember this is supposed to be with you and uh, yeah yeah and he decided to just like okay whatever Wait, and then that's exactly where you drive to us today you drive back from I, exactly i drove there and I, I i i was driving back from there which is what happened i knew it I knew you didn't tell him. I even said to him, "You where are you today?" Oh, I'm at Tom Toms. I said, "You're not in Pakistan." No, I'm thinking to myself, "I have a hundred dollars that says you didn't tell Usman." Usman's driving through the Tetris Mountains, and we're sitting here waiting for him. So technically, yeah. I don't want to say anything, uh, Newman, but uh, <laughs> I, 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 I don't. I don't want to sound woke, but you're but you the will. most vulnerable member of the trio. Yeah, Given the mental health issues that I have. Yeah, yeah, you have. <laughs> yeah, the therapy that I'm going through is not. Oh my god! In this way, and I'm sure uh, viewers uh, and readers are going to type in and uh, take you guys, uh, you know, by the scruff of the necks and have a go at you because I feel victimized slightly. Hey, let me. I'm gonna let me help you in a New York. Let me help you in a, a New York way. <laughs> I got your victim right here, pal. Um, so, <laughs> okay. Victimizing. All right, I got your victim right here. So, but anyway, um, I'm glad mm-hmm. you can make your treacherous drive through the mountains to go visit the guy who didn't show up in your country. Um, apparently he's gonna be yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. Wink, wink, what? wink, wink. Um, <laughs> yeah, so. exactly. This is just, just, just so that you know, Doc. This hmm. is the third time it has happened. <laughs> trust me trust me yeah. yeah cut him off just there cut him off just i know there. It's, no it's that ufo thing that happened last that's, not UFO. UFO. that's the finger of god <laughs> but i'm sitting here and i didn't touch anything so anyway look at that look at that instant, wow. instant punishment instant wow. karma and take a screenshot. Wonderful. Take a screenshot. Look at look how ridiculous he looks. Take a screenshot now. I'm I have it. I have the screenshots because AI screenshot. will generate this as a screenshot. Story. This is what happens when you you, you get on the case of vulnerable people. Mm. Look at him. He's stuck. He's stuck. stuck. He's forever and ever. Forever and Me. ever. He can't hear this and he's he can't say anything back. There's a pro and a con to that because I want him now to tell our fans how you taste cigars and he's got a kit. I think I think before this show, which you were recording, right? Yep. We had a very, very nice, reasonable discussion about how one might possibly come to the flavor of a cigar. Sure. It, is have a few profiles in your head and work out which one is closest to. I like that. And then, yeah. um, I mean, not ridiculous flavors like ice right. cream, but like sort of like vanilla. <laughs> right, right, right. But. Um, I, I I guarantee you when we when when uh, Usman rejoins, he's back, sure. in a roundabout way. It's going to be a bit like that. I think so. I will also say, when I read like in Cigar Aficionado and it, or any of the cigar ratings and says, "Oh, you'll taste this, this, and that." So when I I'll smoke one of those cigars, I'll go in with the preconceived notion I'm going to taste that. And once again, I don't taste anything. For me, it becomes the smell of the cigar. Um, so, oh look, he's back. So now that you're back, we're discussing what you were going to yes, talk sir. to the, the novices about, the new, the nubos. Yes, sir. Tell us about how we taste our cigars. I am 14 um, McAllen's into my cigar, <laughs> so I taste McAllen. Oh, okay. And, and just so we're clear, pink elephants get drunk, they see me. So um, we figured that this would be a good show for you to tell everybody, here's how you taste a cigar. Right. Okay. And before we go into that, yes, yes. Yeah. You're gonna yell before, at resist more. Before we, <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I want, okay. well, yes, I wanted to, but mm-hmm. okay, it's fine. Okay. Mm-hmm. But there was a question that it was uh, again. Wow. Uh, to my friend <laughs> live on the show. Yes. It's not. It's not. It's not. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. Yes. So the EGM cigars. Yeah. Okay, so Raza, and for all the viewers, the EGM cigars are not sold at the Hotel Nacional, but a place called Bleco Bar in the Malecon area, in the Malecon Ooh. district in Havana. Dominican Puros are sold in Havana. Wow, okay. That's breaking news. So, yes. 
Yes, sir. So anyone who I wants to have EGM that. cigars I in Cuba. That. I can confirm that I did my own research three days ago. And the same mm-hmm. bar was made, which is the bar at which a lot of EGM events are held. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. And, All the uh, anniversaries happen there as well. Which is perhaps why there is a little bit of a tie-up to retail EGM cigars there. Yeah, very nice. Look at us. Look what we've taught the fans today. You're welcome. Uh huh. So and we're not even and we're not even charging for this yet. Anyway, yeah. so and now that Usman's yes, joined, absolutely. and I've sent and I've sent actually, our actually, live link the, the, to all his yeah. friends. Now all the live viewers are showing up. Nobody showed up before. Now they're all showing up, of course. And I'm smoking just saying it was a Rocky Patel <laughs> Year of the Dragon cigar, which is a beauty. And our friend here is smoking an H Upman Fifty. I think he's trying to show off for people. Um, and, and what are a you? A beautiful smoking? cigar. A beautiful cigar. Which one? Right. So it is. A, it's a Friday. No, well, the, he's smoking Magnum Fifty. It's a Friday. Why not a Cohiba Friday after ages? So okay. I am going to light up a Cohiba Novidosos. Excuse it us. Is, okay. So the Cohiba Novidosos is. It's the only uh, Habano specialist edition in a Cuba or uh, in a Cohiba was launched a few years ago. Wow. Uh, pretty rare to find a lot of times. I was lucky to get my hands on a few of these. Now, UFOs are there again. There you go. Moving on to yes. before, okay. Moving on to we talked about that we will tell our viewers about how they taste or how the aroma and the cigar comes in. <clears throat> right. There's a very, very interesting way, and there's a science and a logic behind that. If you okay. recall, if you're eating something, or if you're drinking, the first reactions of anything come from the sense of smell. And okay. you say, oh, okay, this is what I, I'm smelling, so maybe this is vanilla, this is chocolate, this is uh, pistachio, this is nuts, and all that. And similarly, when you eat something, your 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 glands tell you what is it that you're eating, or the sense of sweetness, the sense of spices, the sense of saltiness. Hence, when you smoke a cigar and when you take a puff, there are two things do you get. If it is spicy or sweet or if it is salty or something of that sort, once you get from your glands in the in the mouth. How However, if there are any other notes and aromas that you want to talk about, you actually get when you either retrohale them or through the puff and through the cigar's uh, smoke. That's what it tells you how it tastes. But all of of this memory uh, comes from originally your brain. So technically, whatever we eat or drink or smoke or inhale, the entire recollection of what that thing is is actually linked to your sensory uh, part in, and that is where the all information comes in. To ease that out and to actually ensure that what does it mean that in a cigar, this is coconuts or this is hazelnuts or this is peanuts or this is chocolate or this is whatever, I mean, cream. There right. is a very useful and interesting tool available in the market uh, made by Aeromaster. So yeah, Aeromaster mm-hmm. has made, yeah. So Aeromaster has, so you can see their website as well. Aeromaster sure. has made this kit. They actually made a lot of these kits. And this kit is the Cigar Aromas kit. So it is a Cigar Aroma kit that you use it for right. identifying the kind of cigars and it, it, it has like 12 different kind of aromas and, and over like the major 12 nuances you get out of your cigars. So if I open it, actually be able to see 12 different bottles in it, like perfumes. Can you, can you, can you drink or, those? Or, can you drink those? Well, you surely cannot because okay, these are I'm just checking. <laughs> All right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, so if you see labeled with numbers and all that stuff, so right. let's say, let's say, how does it work? Is 
this is a guide with this whole thing so which tells you what bottle corresponds to uh what kind of a flavor and pro and oh. for the easier one the mid is they've actually put the pictures of those so these are the major right. 12 aromas that you actually get actually get out of a cigar uh okay. and and just to start off with i mean since the first one is uh we we commonly talk about hay in the cigar so is i'm going to open this up okay now everybody you're going to be able and, to smell this uh, so pay and, attention smell yes. it so if you smell this you actually recognize what does hay corresponds to in a cigar and that oh, is okay. what the whole it it it's it's a few times that you do it and you can actually recognize it and if you really want to do it in a, in a much useful way you can actually smoke a cigar and along with that you can continue to slowly and gradually test which of the bottles is tasting as what so for example is giving me the notes of an earth so let's see what does earthy notes mean yeah so that mm. that 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 profile tells you that this is this is more of the earthy profile so slowly and gradually once you uh, this is this is something which is not very uh common in, in use uh, and not many people would want to have the science behind it attached to it but people like me who are who are a bit nerds uh, always prefer uh, to know what they're smoking how does it uh, how does it smell and how does it taste uh, to smoke a cigar and 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 then you can actually it in terms of the profile the aroma and the taste profile that a cigar is going to make uh, or, or tell you about so this is this is this is what i am going to talk more about in terms of that and and with a lot of with with a little bit of practice with a little bit of uh and and taking it seriously people who do not or or people who say i cannot taste anything but smoke they can right. also slowly and gradually are able to at least pinpoint or talk about three to four major common ones which are primarily cedar earth hay and and a few of them with the nuts as well nice. these are these are the common nuances one can actually pick out but yes if you really good at it and if you really put your you. sense of smell to use right. you can actually uh take you tire 12 bottles and and figure out what is it there in the cigar Thank very you. nice well yes because we're talking about you cuz you are above a salmonella so yes we realize that so <laughs> the princess yeah the princess, the princess the princess yes the princess we're sorry princess we forgot well 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 yeah yeah on a relatively serious note we had a conversation yeah. <laughs> with Stephen you and I before Osman joined us Yes. Were we on the mark? Yes, we were. No, so yes. I, I didn't hear you. Can you say it one more time? Oh, uh, yeah, I hate this. Princess was right. I'm going <laughs> to this. And this is the one that he's going to make sure that they make a short and he's going to loop it and it's going to play forever on Instagram and on YouTube. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Before you showed up, before we technically started the show, even though we were live, he was those, saying that we, those we those, those, those ahead of the curve are There we go. Locked. Yes, Often that's true. That. Yes, that's true. Oh He was saying that when before you smoke a cigar, if you go in with some preconceived thoughts of what it might taste like, whether it's vanilla or caramel or earthy or this or that or your ex girlfriend, whatever, um, he was saying that when you smoke it, that you may be able to detect some of the flavor. And with your kit, I can smell it and then taste and smell. That would be cool. I have to get one of those now because I'm one of those that's that really just. Kit. Actually, just I I didn't know about this kit. That's actually. Actually, if, if if you could, you should put a link to that kit. I should do the, that. Um, I should do that. Hey, I'm going to call them and go. Show, You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. What? Well, well, yeah. Exactly. Once once the show goes live, we can actually put that on on the comment section. I, mean, see, so, you know, I agree. Is, is, yes, if you smell it, live. and then you go. The show is, the show is live. Yeah. So, oh no. Oh yeah. My, 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 yeah. My bad. In the comments. <laughs> no. Had you been watching, you would have. Known. Yes. Yes. You, know, if you would have shown up on time and not been driving all over Pakistan oh, yes. for some reason. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, of course. Yeah, well, 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 the some reason is in front of me. <laughs> yes, I'm. I we know what the reason is. <laughs> of course, so, it's on the fault. 
that, <laughs> yeah, of course, princess. So, but that is the I'm, I'm actually happy to go on the cross for this one. Here we go. Here we come. You're Muslim. Steven, There's no Stephen. 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 Yeah, perfect. Stephen, I have proofs to share strict thrice already. Yes. And I'm again in for a fourth surprise. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> you, you told right. me that when I, so, right so, before the so show, on, I said, the f- I said I, on- before the show, I said, oh, you're in al And he's like, I'm, I'm in, I'm in TomTom. And I go, that's not in Pakistan. He says, no, I didn't make it's it. Cl- it's and close it, enough. It's close it's enough. Close, it's close enough by like 8,000 <laughs> meters or 8,000 miles. Um, and I was like, interesting. Yeah, yeah. And in the back of my mind, all I kept yeah, thinking uh, was, Miles. I bet you he didn't text Usman that he's not in Pakistan. So, you know. <laughs> what's my name again? I forget. Um, yeah, yeah. Yes, we know you're the H. Upman 50. Yes, we're well aware of what you're smoking. Yeah, Are I you going for the endorsement? I'm, try, I'm, try, I'm, I'm trying no, to the, embed this in I, my head I know, because... I know, I know, I know. Okay. I know he's showing it to me because he knows this is one of my favorite cigars. And he no, always no, said that. Right, right. You may you, <laughs> you remember this better than I remembered it because um, I was trying to... So Christian brought it down for me earlier on. I was trying to remember if I've smoked it or not, right? Yeah. yeah. And I said to Christian, the only way I can remember certain cigars, if I go on my Instagram feed and have a look back... And Usman, very, very interestingly, you might remember during COVID, I was driving around London often... Smoking, and I was smoking a Chapman fifties. Nice, nice. And I must That's have smoked a whole box. I must have smoked a whole box of them, but I forgot because you know around COVID time, everyone was busy trying to stay alive. And, yes. Um, and um, anyway, so yeah. I'm revisiting this cigar after four-ish years, maybe five. How many years ago was did like four? Let's say four years. years. Four years ago. Can I tell you, I, I found it by Over, mistake yeah, a, few, yeah. a few years ago, maybe 10 years ago, and, and I like the 54s. Um, they're the same as the 50s, if you will, but I like the, the H. Upman Magnum 54, and I will smoke those whenever I can get them. If there's those, um, and then there's a few that are like my favorite, if I can get them. And the problem right now is just getting them. Um, because the uh, people from China, I, I, I had no problem. Was, was, I said, Can I have an H. Upman 50? And Christian very kindly just brought it downstairs. Well, sure, because, you know, you're where there's cell Cuban cigars. I have to call a guy who knows a guy, calls another guy that doesn't exist, and they have to smuggle cigars Steven, in for us to smoke Cubans. Steven, yes, my friend. Steven, I have found a hack for you. Okay. You'll tell me so off air. I shall tell you. I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you off air exactly. Okay. Very good. I like we, that. We would like solve. We, 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 we nice. We'll solve that. We'll solve our Cuban yeah. crisis very quickly. And of yes, course, the yes, sir, crisis. absolutely. Yes, the missile it, crisis that never, never was. Uh, so. <laughs> I know, I know, I know we need viewers and I know we need uh, a, a lot of uh, people who have watched the show, but not like this. So, people thought of the whole thing. Already two Pakistanis sitting on a show talking about missiles is going to go hit on another way. Yeah, that, so let's not talk we're going to whole diff- we're gonna get a whole different audience. We're going to get a whole different audience yes. for the show. Yeah. We, seriously be, don't, we seriously do not want yeah. that. <laughs> we'll, we'll have government agencies knocking on all our doors going, now, when you were talking about the Cuban Missile Crisis, were you referring to real missiles or cigars? I'm like, cigars, you idiots. <laughs> so. I believe, I believe that had yeah. we had someone... When I say we, you guys, you, you sitting in the USA, had someone of the caliber of Donald Trump at that time. Oh, oh we would have been, we would have this was oh. way. <laughs> what did I say? What, what did I say? No, no, we just been. It only took you forty eight uh-huh. minutes to bring it up. So yeah, I see, you know. So what are you going to do when he loses in November to <laughs> Harris? What are you going to do then? Uh, you know, when a winner loses, it's not called losing. A winner remains a winner. It doesn't matter yeah. what. Really. Um, just so you know, oh, um, when, wow. in, the, in the in the in the championship league and the Premier League, when you lose, you suck unless you're number one, and then you get relegated. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes on. So let's winning like, and, yeah, they're winning. Winning, winning and winning. losing is overrated. It's all about character. There we go. There oh. we go. Okay. I mean, I can put a t-shirt on, or I can put a pair of pajamas on, or a suit on, but the cigar and the way I smoke it remains the same. Well, me too, but I mean, my butler lights it, and then he holds it for me when people aren't around, because I don't want to dirty my hands, so I knew we smoke them the same way. So. <laughs> very, very, very well. Very well said, sir. Very well said. <laughs> <laughs> so now I have to bring my butler with me when I go to the UK, because, you know, I don't want to hold this. I got things. The UK so, is full yeah. of butlers. 
Everyone I know in the that. UK has a butler. I, can I tell you, there's an article last week in the FT about the butler school out in the UK. And, you know, if you want to have a butler, here's the school you should go with and how they train them. And I'm reading everything they do. And they, they choose your wine. They choose your food. They choose this. And nowhere in it did they say they choose your cigars. And I was like, what kind of butler is this? Oh, I mean, like, how are they going to, you know, have to take care the, of me? The cigar choice is the, the personal <laughs> choice that is left down to the individual. Osman, though, by the way, because yeah. Osman is one of the people who's been recommending me this cigar. Yes. Yeah. Nice cigar. Light cigar, nutty, almost slightly sweet. Uh -huh. Osman's trying to figure out. It's trying well, to figure nutty, out. I agree you and I recognize. No, no. Yeah, no, no. So, <laughs> no, um, so nutty, I agree. A bit of creamy profile, I agree. The sweetness is something which I maybe I did not notice hang on, many hang times. On, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me hang on. Let me have a sip of this Coke one more time and let me tell you. Yeah, yeah, please. Maybe it'll taste like Coca Cola next time. Yes, there, there is sweetness. There is sweetness. <laughs> yeah, why it was there. That's Duh. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, let me ask okay. you this. So, uh, go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Mm. No, no, go ahead, good. I'm good. Yeah. Just keep going. So what I was uh, sure. So what I was going to ask is, have we decided and thought of, or are we going to talk about it now? The topic was you telling everybody how you taste cigars and about the kit, and that's how we left it. And then yeah. the rest of the no, show, no, no, that's for, that's for today. Yeah. Oh, you mean next week? Yeah, that was for today. Yeah, next week. I meant right. what, what's what's that we want to talk. about? Well, I think the first question we have to find out from Princess is what country she'll be in. Um, so, you know, you know, the show will start on time. And I, two, I can tell you, can tell you yes. which country I'll be in already. I'm in the country of Reza. In my brain. United uh, I'm, Kingdom. I'm in, a, I'm, in, a, I'm, in a, I'm in a happy place. Uh, <laughs> always in a happy place. It's all about state of mind. There I think we go. The physicality of the world is temporary. Oh, and my God. The state, of, the state of mind is the thing that lasts the longest. Yes. And so... Um, Later when I hang myself, I'll remember mm, this. Anyway, uh, so next, next week, okay, let me, I'm really I have a controversial topic. I have a controversial Please. topic. Let's be controversial. But I would like when, when, when Usman, it, our when resident is it not? cigar. I would, like, I would like Usman, our resident cigar sommelier, to have a go at addressing. And sure. I'm not going to put any more details in it. I'm just going to ask it as a question. New World Cigars versus Cuban Cigars. Go. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, that's okay. next week's topic. That's, 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 that's next week's week. oh, okay. topic. Yes. And okay. I want, I want honestly, in, in a very honest way, in a very honest way, I want him to be able to summarize in the space of whatever, you know, 10, 15 Seven hours slot we have. Sure. Yeah. The major differences, the major hang-ups, right. the, the, the issues or the non-issues. I think that's a really cool topic. And I agree. That's a really cool topic, especially for the U.S. audience, Stephen, because in the U.S. you tend not to be able to get Cuban cigars very easily. Right. Well, we can and, and we yeah. can. It just depends. And, 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 and there's a certain amount of yeah. snob value, uh, especially sitting in the U.K. You can, I mean, Cuban cigars are in ab abundance here. It's probably the world's right. sort of central cigar market right. for Cuban cigars. It's probably one of the world's most expensive markets for Cuban cigars. Right. So what is yeah. this myth about Cuban cigars versus new, is it new is world. it a myth? Is there some reality to it? Is there a is it just down to personal preference of taste? Is it because there's a superiority or inferiority? What is it? So yeah. maybe Usman can debunk. Let's call it That'd a cigar cool. debunking hashtag cigar like cigar debunking. I like uh, that. And, uh, and uh, sorry, I didn't quite hear what you said, Stephen. I know I like that. I think that's a very I think that's a very interesting topic. But yes, I will say something you. to that, to that. No, no, you two, you're two for two today, Princess. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited for you. So, you know, it doesn't happen that rare. So this show is going to be one of your favorites. Um, but yeah. what I think is interesting, though, because right now we know, like, China is buying Cuban cigars China. like, you know, China. I'm from New York. It's China. Um, they're buying Cuban cigars like water. Um, so the interesting part is, 
if if Bloody the U.S. ever if, if I know right New Yorkers if the U.S. ever said to to Cuba you know the cigar embargo is off and I think it's all like they, the Cuban government pays them to keep the cigar embargo on <laughs> but if they ever I truly believe it right for the mystique but if this if the Cuban government and the U.S. government ever got together or they stopped paying them to keep the embargo on and we started to have Cuban cigars here. I think we would be larger me, Cuban cigar lost. smokers. Well, no, no. This, I, yeah, I think the U.S. would be the largest Cuban cigar smoker, even over the Chinese cigar smokers. That's how said that. How did, how I did have, said I that? have. No, no. I no, no. Wait, wait. I have, I have a very different point of view on this. And the point of I, view is, actually, there will be no one else who will get Cuban cigars. It'll only be the U.S. market. The production capacity right. within the Cuba, uh, within Cuba will just be consumed by the U.S. market itself, and nobody else will need it. Okay, so and it will right, be lo- it will be logistically it will be logistically easiest for Cuba to supply to the yeah. U.S. It right. will become much more uh, like easier access for all the American smokers, and right. the amount of sm- cigars smoked in the U.S. are till date again one of the highest uh, numbers. So I sincerely and seriously doubt that we would ever see any Cuban cigars because there would be two things. Even if the embargo lived, one, right. people will start not only purchasing for smoking, but for collecting and right. hoarding technically because they don't know when the embargo might be put in again or something goes wrong. Right. So at least store as much as you can and again, the similar thing, which is like collect it and then resell it as a second. The U.S. becomes the second biggest secondary market for that, as and, compared and just to so China or any other places. And just so we're clear with what you just said, I'm okay with all of that. Anyway, um, trust, me. Trust, <laughs> trust me, I fear that day. I fear that day is the most. No, but is there not also um, an argument that one could say that, you know, in terms of the U.S. market, the tastes are associated with cigars. Right. I, I'm talking about personal t- they're, they're sort of like embedded now. People like their Arturo Fuentes and their, yeah. and their I don't know, sort of like Dominican cigars, Nicaraguan cigars. They're kind yeah. of like acclimatized to those tastes. It's, it's like someone who smokes Cuban cigars regularly mm-hmm. trying to smoke a New World cigar. You find that, hang on, this is this is just not the product I like. It's like the right. Coke and Pepsi. It's the Coke and Pepsi kind of difference. They may both right. be decent drinks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or decent drinks. Raza, when you're taste, Raza, yes, that's that's... The further discussion on this, I would keep for the next week, because okay. this is and exactly one one very interesting well, section I, 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 where you know, we I talk about Cubans and non-Cubans. Started, so. Yeah. Well, and the other thing which is interesting about it is you get yeah. a lot of the um, you'll see in like whatever website will sell cigars, uh, New World cigars, and they like, but it's a Cuban seed. I'm like, yeah, but it's not Cuban soil, and it's not rolled by the Virgin. Yes. So there's all these things because you're a Cuban seed. It doesn't mean you're X, Y, Z just because, uh, and I'll be somewhat funny. A Bugatti is a car. And so is a Ford. Pick your Ford. It's not the same car. Yeah. The same vehicle. So I, I, True. when I see a Cuban cigar, I truly enjoy it. And I would say a hundred times more than a new world, but the new worlds that I do pick out, they're not going to come close, but they still give me that kind of enjoyment. And there's other new worlds that, you know, they're yeah, not worth Yeah. And if you guys know, my go-to cigars, the CAO Brazilian Amazon, and with every penny of the $6 yeah. it is for a cigar. And it, I can, I'll put that up against anything. But when I travel, I go wherever I can get my Cuban cigars and I buy whatever I buy. And I'm like, I'm thrilled to death because I have all these different Cuban cigars that yeah. I can choose and try. And it's just a different, a different world. Well, that's you know what we've been really good tease up, but Absolutely. but but Osman is going to hopefully debunk, yeah, this at a technical level next week at a okay. technical level. Yes, Ooh. sir. Yes, sir. Let's wow. do that in the same way. In the same way that you know, uh, it's all very cool talking about flavors and aromas, but you know this kit that Osman just showed earlier on. Yeah, yeah Osman, remind us what it's called. What's the kit called oh, that you showed us? By- it's the kit by Aromaster. It's the Cigar Aromas kit by no, okay. Aromaster. We'd love to have it. Fabulous. Aromaster.com. And it's okay. 12 different aromas. It's the Cigar Aromas kit. Very nice. Okay. I love it when technicality sets in. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's well, it helps. 
You know, what's funny is, I mean, our show is a lot of fluff, but then when we do get down to the serious part of the show, if Thank you're you. Cigar 101, <laughs> yes, Princess, if you're Cigar 101 or a cigar aficionado, Usman brings oh. things to you that most people have no clue. And yeah, if you're I'm, really into cigars, I'm, I'm very surprised that's it. actually. Actually, the tidbits that we're getting on the show, I haven't seen anywhere else. I mm-hmm. think, I, 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 I think agree. not 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 to trump not not to trumpet my own horns. The, the only thing but is, you should. It's, Go it's ahead. Pure, it's, uh, well, well, it's it's purely about one's own interests, and and maybe I was wired that way that I prefer reading on and and learning stuff more. Mm-hmm with a theoretical background to it, which is why yeah. I do it. Otherwise, I'm sure this thing has no, been out there for quite the a while. And thank you. So so that's, and, and, I prefer, and I love sharing it. I mean, if I know something, why not? It should benefit the others. Incredibly, so that's, I've that's learned more. Reason. No, incredibly, I've, I've learned more in listening to you for two minutes than I learned by talking to myself for the last hour. Well, that, is, that would always straight. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people would. I think I think most of the fans would say that too. They've learned more in the last two minutes than they last. You know. I think so. I think so. Yeah, I'm just saying. I mean, you know, uh, it's three or two uh, minutes. Listen, Usman is the resident expert. Now, before we go, because we have fans that actually like to watch the live show, and this week screwed them up. And I know they're very upset. They have to watch the rebroadcast. They couldn't ask questions like last week. So before we go, it's going to be interesting. Where are you yeah. in Pakistan next week or in the United Kingdom? Because that determines if we do the show at 8.30 my time or 10.30 my time, which also determines what time it is in Pakistan or the UK for the live fans. Stephen, I'll do, I'll you know, Stephen, Stephen, no, no, Reza, yeah. Reza, shut up. Stephen, we are doing this show on our time, which is 8.30 in the morning, your time. There we go. All right, so back to the normal time next week, everybody. So if you're watching the yes, show, of course, back to the normal. 8.30 Central, yeah, yeah. 9.30 New York time, and whatever time that is in, yes. in Pakistan, I think that's 6.30 it's, at night. It's and six, we're, 6.30 p.m., yes. At Pakistan, and for RZA, it's RZA time, so uh, we're all good. <laughs> and I will tell you, yes. we put the short out, which you also made cute, about you being Newman, and on YouTube is blowing oh, yes. up. Um, that people are enjoying the uh, the Newman short. Sorry, 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 sorry. What are you doing? Sorry, sorry. What are you doing? He's now? trying to be. I'm removing the Magnum 50 band because it's it's getting close to the edge. If you know what I mean. Why can't Why go. can't just you bring it? Why can't you just take it off? Yeah, like I a normal was, person. I was, but guess what it was doing? Guess what it was doing? Oh, it's ripping the cigar. Well, th- because because no no because you tried to do it faster. It wasn't no, no, no. that I mean, warm I mean, that the gently, glue, the glue gently, would have been gently. No, no. See, don't, I know, I don't, don't do that. No. Next time. I, no, no. I, no. See, this, your this, difference so is personal you, preference. You, That's a personal preference. I do not like taking the band off by undoing the band. I like the band to roll off. Yeah, That's yeah right. of course it should roll off. Uh, yeah. Well, well, the only yeah, thing, the only thing, case. the only the. The only thing is, I'll tell you one thing. You take it downward. You take it off from the foot. Oh, yes. Oh, look at that. You've learned something else today. Look at that. See, we are learning because stuff. When, because what happens is it is, it is already it is already burning from that foot side. So when it comes right. close to where your band is, because of the heat, the glue will start melting and it will automatically, if in case it is stuck to the wrapper of the cigar it will automatically leave it and it will be ready to be taken off and then you just take it off from the foot side yes it's slightly technical you have to be careful not to burn you just take it off from the ashes side and you're good to go and wait till the time the cigar is burning to close to your uh, band of the cigar so that the glue automatically leaves the cigar in case it is stuck to it Otherwise, it's all good. Because when you start doing this even very gently and all that, that actually means you are going to ruin the wrapper yourself because you already started applying pressure. So don't mm-hmm. do that. Let the, uh, l- l- let the cigar burn to an extent that you can actually feel the heat underneath the wrapper. And once you start feeling, when you are holding the cigar from it's getting hotter and it, it's burning, it's actually okay. the time ready for this uh, band to be taken off. Very nice. 
Look at that. We've taught you people something else. Yeah. This is like Sesame Street, but better. Because we don't have Elma. <laughs> so. Oh, Operation. Oh, oh yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, we love it. Oh, God. So, today was brought to you by the letters. So, oh, for so, oh. oh, yes. Uh, uh, gentlemen, as always, I, Princess, do you want me to end the show or do you want to keep going? Because last week we have the clip of you. You've already come out. The show would not end. It's, we call it the show that would not end last week because you wanted to go on. And we don't. I don't want to interrupt you today. I mean, so, you know. Yeah. Have um, it your way today. Oh, oh. Burger, Burger, it's Burger King all of a sudden. Great. <laughs> Are you going to do commercials from the 80s? All of a sudden, have it your way. Burger King. Okay. So, <laughs> so, but no, it was a great show. Next week, we're going to debunk the mystery of the Cuban to New World cigars. This week was how to smell your and taste your cigar. I think that's so, gonna, I think I think this show is going to do very well. I think a lot of people are going to want to know how to smell and taste their cigar. No, very very good. Yeah, very good show. Very good and, show. What we, and what we and what we'll and what we'll do is for the viewers who generally join us for the first part in World A, we will recap this thing in a less than two minutes time next time when we start oh, as well, just so that. Oh, we have thank it. God. So yeah, and and then we'll run the intro sooner than twenty eight minutes into it. So there you go. So uh, yeah. be. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Saying, oh, we're gonna keep up with everything, yeah, gentlemen. As always, it, it's a pleasure. Um, we will see. I'm gonna definitely say this. We will see Risen next week in London. Um, yes, so somebody doesn't have to drive five hours over the mountains to a place that he's not. And uh, I will be here, of course. <laughs> I think in Austin, where it's only gonna be 30 Celsius. Appreciation, anyway. <laughs> Just so you know, we're your we're your biggest fan. Yeah, we are both of us together. Yeah. We're your biggest fan. Yeah, yes. we're, we have a fan club for you. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, I have a I have a bumper sticker. Princess R Us. I'll be sending it to you shortly. I, so. uh, <laughs> well, I, well, well, this, this can actually become the new name for the group. <laughs> yes, the new, new name of the show, Princess R Us. Oh yeah. So, and, and we'll see, that'll get more views than you know the Havana Cigar Show. Go figure. So, uh, it could be yeah. Worse. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. If you're listening on the podcast, thank you. The podcast, by the way, uh, these gentlemen don't know, but I will tell them, explodes every week. Um, people from around the world, because we can see where they wow. listen from, keeps growing. So people are enjoying our banter and enjoying, I'm assuming, more of our Salmonese lessons. Um, so if there's something that we haven't discussed that you would like to hear, pop us a note and we will give it to yes, our, uh, our Salmonese and he will, he will tell you what he knows. And next week during the live show, 8 a.m. Central, Figure that out wherever you live. You can ask questions live like they did last week. Um, and we'll go from there. And then we'll uh, yes, see what we can do for everybody. Anything else, gentlemen, before we say goodbye? Riza, are you okay? Or is he going to complain today? Oh, he's not complaining today. Okay. He's, he has important things to do, like oh, yeah. drink another Coca-Cola. All right, good. Yeah. So we'll yeah. see everybody. Let, let's, and, hope, and, let's hope he's – let's after the promo is run – yeah, uh, let's see, for, see if he for, stays for or if he's going to have to rejoin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're going to we're staying yeah. on <laughs> after the show, Grandpa. Stay. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's going to be a heck of a show. Everybody, have a wonderful week. Good to see my friends as always. Bye. We'll talk to y'all soon. Cheers, everybody. <laughs>